Hi, I'm Jake from Cali Kid Customs. I have been working hard over the years to fulfill a true passion of mine, restoring classic vehicles. Throwing everything I have into making this dream come true, watch as I discover these rare classics, top mechanics, and money pits, unearthing lessons and hidden gems along the way. As the great Pirelli Jones says, if you're in control, you're not going fast enough. Hit like and subscribe below. Welcome to the first episode from Cali Kid Customs, where we'll be going over my current restoration project, a 1966 convertible GTO, detailing the step-by-step -step process from the managing standpoint. Today, we'll be going over how I find these rare and exotic classics using online resources like Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, eBay Motors, and even the ancient Craigslist. The first thing you're going to want to do, and it's a very, very, very big thing, is to set realistic parameters. Ask yourself the question, what is my end goal? Is it to resell? Is it to restore nostalgic memory? Or is it even something you want to take to the track every weekend? I have always been taught when buying something, think of the exit strategy, the sell side. Set a solid financial guideline. For example, how much am I willing to buy this restoration project for? How much am I willing to invest into the restoration? Better yet, not how much am I willing, but how much am I comfortable in spending? You don't want to overextend your limitations and hurt yourself in the long game. And finally, how much are you trying to get for your restoration project? I'm sorry, but no SS clone will sell for over 80k. No Tempest or Le Mans will sell for the same price as a GTO. No Maverick will sell for the same price as a Mustang. No matter what you put into the process. Once you have your financial and target market set, you can jump into the next steps. Finding the right car for your market. I like to write down 5 to 10 models that your market is in need of. And if you're unsure of that, start doing some research. Watch classic car auctions and see what's getting a lot of attention. Write down the years and car models that your favorite restoring TV shows are restoring. For example, when searching, use the search filter and set it to a minimum of 50,000 and set the years to 1920 to 1974. It'll give you a nice list of cars in that price range at that time and you can kind of start to get a feel of what cars are going for what prices. I'll give you some great starter ideas right now. Any chargers or challengers from 68 to 71, those are really high value cars right now and everyone wants one. Any 60s Camaro, any 60s GTO, any 60s Corvette, any Chevelles, any Mustang Fastbacks, these are a lot of high value cars right now. They're very sought after and very rare. Those are just a few to name, and now it's going to be your turn to name five off the top of your head. Yeah, you can use my examples, and those are great examples, but there are so many cars out there that people do want. Our biggest tool when buying online is going to be that search filter. It's going to typically be on the left hand of your screen, and you're going to get to set things like the minimum and maximum year, how much you want to spend on the car, and all those types of things. Following your guideline, type in the criteria you're looking for. Set the minimum and maximum year. I like to do a maximum price. And on the price, I like to do seven to $8,000 higher than what I'm trying to look for. If I'm looking for an $8,000 car, I typically set it at 15,000. This gives me room to try and talk the seller down or a lot of times they're emotionally invested in this car or project that they have and it's not worth that. And so they'll overprice this car hoping they can get that. But typically, you know, eh, I could talk them down to 7,500. They're asking 15,000, kind of crazy. Remember, one of the biggest rules to business is the buy side. You make your money on the buy side. The more you can wiggle the price down, the more of a chance you have of actually making money on this project. Once scrolling, you'll see a lot of cars in this area and a lot of the cars will say Charger, Challenger in the little keyword section on the bottom. They use this just to pop up on your screen. 
and you're going to want to utilize this same type of tactic popping up on their screen when you're selling. So remember hot keywords, Chevelle, Camaro, Challenger, Charger, all these things will help you utilize and help you sell your car in the end also. So let's jump onto the computer and let's see what we can come up with. We're going to start here in Facebook Marketplace and we're going to set the maximum price to 10,000. And we're going to set the maximum year. I like to do 1973. Usually anything after 73 is not really resellable. Yeah, they have awesome cars in that area, but let's be honest, it's not my forte. I also like to set the radius as high as I can. And you'll see in other episodes, we're going to teach you how to ship cars and make sure that you're solid and squared away and you have no issues getting this car to you. So we're going to click along and we're going to see a lot of things that you're just questioning. Is this even a good car? And I'm going to point out some things you want to look for. You're going to want to look for rust around the rear wells. You're going to want to look for rust on the roof or behind when the water runs off the back window. A lot of water sits right there. So you're going to want to look for these things. The first car we're really going to look into is a 1964 Chevy Impala. And as, as you can see, the hood doesn't even match up to the car, so it's probably tweaked somewhere. There's really bad rust spots in the rear panels, the driver door, in the front panels. Looks like this thing is completely rusted out. It's probably been sitting there. It looks like it was once a lowrider. This looks like a really big project. Lowriders usually have a lot of weight going up and down on them so it tweaks the frames sometimes even breaks the frames keep scrolling and the next project we're going to jump into is a awesome my favorite car 1968 dodge charger now this car resells for usually minimum of eighty thousand. so let's see what this guy wants he wants thirty five thousand, which obviously is out of my price range but this is an awesome car, so let's see what he has and let's let's dive into it a little bit. It looks like he's already done the paint, maybe even an off-body restoration, can't really tell. Now he does have sway bars and looks like a new radiator, so it looks like he's actually put some money into this thing. Interior is just trashed. Now, why he would resell it with a trashed interior, I have no idea. He could spend the extra five grand and probably get an extra 25 grand for the car. So I am actually interested in that aspect alone. I could spend an extra five grand into this car and possibly turn it around for 50. So I'm gonna shoot him a message and it's gonna say something like this. Hey Omar, I'm really interested in your car. Can I get more information? Um, I like to also put things like What's in your mind? What's left to do on this restoration? Obviously, this guy is looking at the car. He sits there all day. He's it's probably sitting in his garage or driveway. So he looks at it every day and could tell you a million things to do for the car. So we're going to shoot him just a little message. There's nothing wrong with shooting someone a message and they love talking to people. So so shoot him a message. No problem. Next, we're going to keep scrolling, and right below that 68 Charger is another 68 Charger. And this one is a brand new restoration, and obviously the price reflects that. This guy's asking $125,000 with a brand new Hemi engine in it. It's a beautiful car, and it reflects the price. Two more down, you're going to see a 73 Charger. Now this car, great price, $4,000. Yeah, you can do a lot with $4,000. But look at the details of how much rust and work is going to be put into this car. It looks like the windshield area is all rusted out. Obviously, the roof is rusted out where the vinyl once sat. I don't know what the tape is doing over the door. It looks like there's no window. Um, and then look in the rear quarter panels behind the, um, behind the wheel well, and you'll see a lot of rust in those areas. It's a high rust area just due to driving a lot and the rain being kicked up. So this is what you do. You sit here when you're watching TV and you scroll. You, you're popping out your phone when you're bored on then you scroll. You find ways and find times to scroll and you find time and 
I actually find a lot of enjoyment out of this process. This is something fun that I do. I, I get to look at everyone's awesome projects. I get to see everything. And if you see the the H3, it's obviously not supposed to be in this criteria, but he's just trying to pop up on your screen, kind of like what we want to do on the sell side. Now we're going to transition over into OfferUp. Now this OfferUp is how I found the convertible GTO. And it's a great tool to use. It is the new Craigslist. It's really nice. It's easy to use on your phone. And so we're going to dive into this. And I'm going to show you a couple more projects on OfferUp just to kind of give you a little bit more detail on what you are looking for. As I'm scrolling, I don't see much. Um, I see a 67 Camaro subframe, like sure, 500 bucks, it's nice and straight. If you have the rest of a Camaro, go for it. But if you don't, you're kind of out of luck. The first one I want to talk about is a Ford truck. This one comes as a roller, which means it has no engine and it has no transmission. Now this car would be great if you're trying to make a track truck. If you have a spare engine laying around the shop yeah sure buy it put it in it but that is a lot of work and that is a for a mechanic that is something you have to find a specialty for but getting a roller for a track car is awesome because you can make the the edits to the car and you can make the changes you really want the next car we're going to look at is an old 49 it looks like a ford milk van almost and if you can't tell, there's a lot of rust on this thing. And it's been mangled and looks like it's been in a few crashes. There's rust all over the roof. If you can't tell, it looks like the roof just wants to come off of the car. There's dings and dents on each quarter panel of the bumper. Now, this is a really rare car. So you're not going to find a lot of replacement car parts for this thing. If You're going to have to make every replacement part, which... Sure, if you have a metal shop and a lathe and all that, you could probably do it, but that's gonna cost you a lot of money. And for a truck or a van, that's not gonna get you a nice return or the best return. It's the, you're putting way more into it than it's worth. So there's cracks everywhere, rear and front panels. Obviously, you can see the roof, literally it's coming off. Now, they did do a little bit of interior work, but look at the floorboards. It's composite wood. It's not even anything substantial, probably didn't even come like that new. There's a hole through the driver's side area. It's a big project, and this is something I would avoid right here. This is, you know, you might see it as, oh, it just needs a coat of paint. No, this does not need a coat of paint. That needs days and days under a sandblaster or an acid dip, and you're really looking into something substantial and a huge project. So you're going to do the same thing in eBay Motors. You're going to do the same thing in Craigslist. And don't stop in your area. Like I said before, expand the radius. Go type in zip codes for the south. Type in zip codes in Texas. Type in zip codes in California. Type, it, type zip codes everywhere. Go up to Maryland and D.C. Go up to North Dakota. Look everywhere. It is not that hard to get your vehicle to you. The hard part is the due diligence and knowing yeah, this is a good investment. I want this. I'm Jake from Cali Kid Customs. Subscribe below and hit like.